Cocaine Bear is not a true story, but the story that inspired the horror comedy is truly bizarre, even without all the coked-out bear carnage. Here's what really went down. On September 11, 1985, a man named Fred Myers found a dead body in his backyard in Knoxville, Tennessee. Oh, yes. I'm telling you, he was dead. When the authorities arrived, they discovered that the deceased man was wearing night vision goggles and a bulletproof vest and packing two pistols. As reported by the Washington Post, also found in Myers' yard were food rations, vitamins, a compass, six gold Krugerrands, $4,500 in cash, assorted survival gear, and 75 pounds of cocaine in an army duffel bag worth $15 million. It was almost like a movie. You know, you wouldn't, you, you wouldn't believe it. It turns out that the man had plunged to his death between midnight and 3 a.m. on the morning he was found, after his parachute failed to open. The Federal Aviation Administration reported that all flights for the previous night were accounted for, and if the deceased man was smuggling drugs, his flight plan wouldn't have been filed anyway. The man was later identified as 40-year-old Andrew Thornton II. Andrew Thornton II was born in 1945 in Lexington, Kentucky, to horse breeders Carter and Peggy Thornton. Thornton was an obedient child with a privileged upbringing who didn't get into trouble. He attended a prestigious private school and later joined a military academy to become a paratrooper. In 1965, he participated in the U.S. invasion of the Dominican Republic and received a Purple Heart. One of his friends told the Los Angeles Times, he was an expert skydiver and the type of guy who wouldn't even let anyone touch his pack. He was a fanatic. In 1968, Thornton joined the Lexington Police Force while simultaneously earning his law degree at the University of Lexington. During his time with the police department, he worked for three years as part of the narcotics squad. It was during that time that he turned his back on the law, stealing drugs seized as evidence and selling them. According to the Washington Post, Thornton worked closely with the DEA and was described as an adventurer driven by adrenaline rushes, which most likely fueled his foray into drug smuggling. He resigned from the force in 1977. Thornton's drug smuggling operation was called The Company. The Company had a connection to Jimmy Chagra, a gambler and the head of a major drug smuggling ring. Chagra smuggled cocaine and marijuana from Colombia and Mexico to the United States before he was arrested in 1980. He also pleaded guilty to the attempted murder of a federal prosecutor, according to the New York Times. The Company's operations quickly expanded, and Thornton was aided by his longtime friend, Bradley Bryant. The drug trafficking operation had three Cessna planes at their disposal for transporting cocaine. However, Thornton had to bypass airspace security checks conducted by law enforcement in order to get through the border. There were also rumors that the organization had ties to the CIA, and Thornton and Bryant worked with former CIA contractors to acquire anti-surveillance equipment for the company's planes. In 1981, authorities arrested Bradley Bryant in Philadelphia when a hotel maid reported the smell of marijuana coming from his room. Inside, police found fake driver's licenses, weapons, semi-automatic weapons, $22,000 in cash, and a notebook with operation plans and a list of names, including Andrew Thornton's. According to the Washington Post, Bryant explained that he was on a mission from the CIA, but he was arrested. Months later, Thornton and 24 others were named in a case that involved conspiring to steal government property from the China Lake Naval Base in California. The company needed an IFF radar, which would allow their Cessnas to bypass air security checks when smuggling drugs. Thornton and his accomplices planned to steal the equipment from the naval base. Although Thornton wasn't charged in the theft case, he was indicted on importing and distributing a controlled substance, a charge stemming from a 1979 incident where he piloted a plane smuggling drugs from South America to the U.S. He pleaded not guilty and fled San Francisco, but he was apprehended as a fugitive in North Carolina. He was arrested while wearing a bulletproof vest and carrying a pistol, and he pleaded no contest. He was sentenced to six months in prison, was placed on probation for five years, was asked to pay a $500 fine, and his law license was suspended. Thornton continued his drug smuggling operations after his release from prison in 1982, but he was no longer affiliated with the company. On September 9, 1985, Thornton and his bodyguard, Bill Leonard, traveled to Columbia to transport 400 kilos of cocaine back into the United States. However, Leonard said he wasn't aware of the plan and thought they were going to the Bahamas. Thornton only told him that they were headed to Columbia mid-flight, according to the Knoxville News Sentinel. Leonard told the newspaper in a 1990 interview, He tricked me. There's no way in hell. I mean, anybody that knows me in Lexington knows there is no way I would do anything like this. Upon landing, they were met by men carrying guns, and bags of cocaine were loaded into the Cessna. 
En route back to the U.S., Leonard claimed they heard agents on the radio discussing actions to follow their plane, and he started throwing the bags of cocaine out of the plane in a panic. Thornton put the plane on autopilot, and the men jumped from the plane somewhere over Knoxville. They set up a place to meet, but Thornton never showed up. His parachute didn't open, and he landed in Fred Myers' backyard. The Cessna was found 60 miles away from where Thornton crashed. There's more of this out there. They dumped it somewhere. Several months after Thornton's death, a hunter was in the Chattahoochee National Forest in Georgia when he discovered a deceased black bear that weighed about 175 pounds. Beside the bear was a duffel bag that contained 75 pounds of cocaine, and it was later found out that it came from the Cessna that Thornton piloted before his death. Apparently, the bear died of an overdose after consuming large amounts of the substance that fell from the sky. As reported by Rolling Stone, a necropsy was carried out, and the bear's stomach was, quote, literally packed to the brim with cocaine. The medical examiner who performed the examination said the bear suffered, saying, cerebral hemorrhaging, respiratory failure, hyperthermia, renal failure, heart failure, stroke. You name it, that bear had it. A bear did cocaine! The famous cocaine bear, or Pablo Escobar, as he was later called, was taxidermied and displayed at the Chattahoochee River National Recreation Area for a while. And over the years, it somehow ended up in country singer Waylon Jennings' possession. The cocaine bear was owned by different people throughout the years before it was acquired by souvenir shop Kentucky for Kentucky. Today, Pablo Escobar is displayed at Kentucky for Kentucky shop at the Fun Mall in Lexington. We have people coming from all over the world to see this famous cocaine bear. Pablo is, of course, the inspiration for Elizabeth Banks' horror comedy Cocaine Bear, which hits theaters in February 2023.